Ahoy! Welcome everybody in another edition of the Slim Film Festival Bubbles. As the West Ham fans used to sing after every game, we'll be forever blowing bubbles. And in our case, it's Slim Film Festival Bubbles, where we welcome the most bubbly and sparkling guests of this year's Slim Film Festival. And today, this happened to be Tanya Doyle, director of a film called, a documentary called Eat, Sleep, Cheer, Repeat. Oh. And um, Daniel Haggerty, her producer of the, of, of the film. Um, I think it would be the easiest if you told us what the film was all about in five sentences. Five sentences. Yeah. Okay. Challenge? I'll give it a go. Um, so, Eat, Sleep, Cheer, Repeat is a coming of age film. It's about female athletes who are femin feminine yet strong. It's a feel good film. It is. Uh, a film exploring the relationships between women, our girls and their mothers, and it's a film about team sport. Brilliant. <laughs> One thing is missing. Yes. It's a film from Ireland, which automatically causes a certain language barrier. It needs subtitles. Even for the English speaking, it needs subtitles. Are yeah. you aware of that? Absolutely. We speak very quickly. So and um, you call it quickly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely needs slow time. Yeah. <laughs> so the opening scenes are setting a, a tone it, where we see a, a town, I would call it like a, a working class neighborhood with a, a, there's a, a seaside. Um, where are we? Okay, so the it's the west of Ireland, it's Galway. Um, so it's not the city, it's not the capital city, but it's, it's kind of like a cultural hub on the west side of the, of, of, of the country. Um, what they do, you just described it. You didn't use the word cheerleading, but that's what it is. It is cheerleading, but when the perception of cheerleading is, it kind of has somewhat negative connotation. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's women standing by the sideline cheering on exactly. others. You know, or predominantly cheering on men. But that's not what these people do. They're athletes in their own right, and cheer is a sport. Um, where the athletes just compete against other cheerleaders and they represent themselves and they represent their country. So it's not about kind of being on the periphery at all. It's about being center stage, being very strong, being very feminine and, uh, and competing. I have two questions about that. Did you know before you started this project, I, I, I guess you already knew how spectacular it looked? It's amazing, yeah. Well, I didn't. W w when we when we started, we went looking for a predominantly female sport. We wanted to celebrate women in sport because usually women leave sport at about the age of sixteen, and we wanted to find something a sport where women continued on a little bit longer. Mm. And we came across the world of cheer. And the very first time we saw cheer happen, we went to a competition up the north of Ireland, and it's two and a half minutes the routine. And then once they finish the routine, they all adopt the pose to say it's over, and the music stopped. And a, a, a young girl just turned off and vomited off the edge of the of the floor, and we were like, "Okay, this is pretty intense. Like it's so fast, so so um, physical, and um, and there's very interesting characters." It, it often happens in our interviews as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're completely um, ignoring Daniel now. What's what's your perception on the whole cheer thing? Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 a spectacle, but it's also I suppose what's important for us is that it's a coming of age movie. And we're with a group of young people following them for a number of years. And they're doing this extraordinary thing. I mean, people say to us all the time, oh, uh, it's cheerleading. Who do they cheer for? And we have to explain. <laughs> they cheer for, you know, they cheer for themselves. They cheer against others. They compete. They're athletes. But really, we were following them for, uh, in total, five years um, because we started the project before. Including the COVID years. Yeah, exactly. Which so was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, and there were two years where the world champ these see these athletes want to get to the world championships which is in america that's the you know that's the pinnacle of the sport for them so w every time it, it the world championships is in florida and the us so COVID came along obviously no international travel and then that was the first year and then the second year of COVID of the lockdowns there was no uh, no international teams were allowed to come into america so in total five years but i mean in the film you're seeing a group of young people grow you know, from adolescence, from their late teens into adulthood. I think that's the interesting thing. I have plenty of questions about this film. We, um, I, I, will, I won't be able to, to ask them all, but there's one question that I think is very delicate, that it needs to, it needs to be asked. Cheerleading comes with a certain connotation. 
in the film is completely non-sexualized. We all expected cheerleading to be in a certain way, looking at beautiful girls. And of course, all of them are super beautiful because they are who they are. But the, the fact that it's never at any moment in the film sexualized, is it because you and the camera or is it because the sport is like that? It's like that we did. So we had, you know, bring it on the Hollywood movies. We had this perception going into this world, but it is not like that. Now, saying that they are young women who are very physically fit and they spend a lot of time in very small, you know, like brought up sporting uh, attire, you know, really small uniforms. But cheer is for every type of woman, any type of guy, you know, whether you're tall, short, big, small, it really is all inclusive because there's so many different roles within the team. So we were looking for stories, you know, we were just looking for stories yeah. and whatever came back to us is what is what we captured. But it isn't about, it isn't about kind of, you know, it isn't sexualized is the, the easiest way to say it. But, and it's a lot about, you know, celebrating teamwork and, you know, there's a lot of trust because if somebody's throwing you meters up into the air, you want to be able to, you don't care how slim or how beautiful they are, they want to be able to catch you. You know what I don't trust? The way they count. <laughs> <laughs> They're counting all the time. One, two, five, seven, eight. That's not how yeah. I would be counting. I mean, they count like <laughs> mathematicians, only in prime numbers. <laughs> <laughs> One, three, five, seven. Yeah. Okay, that, that yeah. was, After that was five a little years. bit of distrust with me. Like, yeah. <laughs> After five years in our sleep, we were thinking one, three, five, five seven. seven. That's a lot of counting. <laughs> um, there's one last question I um, have to ask you. You have, uh, you, uh, how, f how was it in Zlin so far? We're having an amazing time. Yeah. It's really yeah, lovely. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. yeah, it's great. But you know what, is, what it's built upon. You know what is the, the roots of the, of the source of Zlin's glory. Well, it's shoes. Shoes, shoes yeah. butter shoes, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, and I was particularly li looking forward to having you in the studio. That's why the last question is, could you please show the camera your <laughs> shoes, put them on the table and tell a story about Do your you wanna shoes. Do you want to know about my shoes? Yeah. Okay, these are my shoes. I'm sorry now, but these are my shoes. So these are um, Kirk Iger shoes. These are the fanciest pair of shoes I own, okay? Well, I'm, I, I, I can <laughs> hope so. <laughs> And these are my wedding shoes. So I, I got married in these shoes, but I'll be very practical. So if you're going to spend a lot of money on shoes, you need to wear them. So I'll wear them wherever I get the chance. Um, would it be the right question now to ask you who you were ma married to? The guy with the, <laughs> other, the other pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so these were your wedding shoes? Yeah. These are not my wedding shoes, no. These are my comfortable, <laughs> I didn't think they were going to be on camera <laughs> shoes. <laughs> they come with a story? No, no, they're just, they're orange. I mean, every time we try and uh, represent the country, a little green, white and orange. So, yeah, it's good <laughs> to have the colours of the flag. Okay, yeah. well, that's a story. You come with the colours of the flag and you come with just Peacocks. exuberance. <laughs> Thank you so much for both coming with the right shoes. Thank you so much for being here with us in the Zlin Film Festival bubble. Thank you so much for um, watching our, uh, our interviews. And uh, we hope to see you again soon in one of the Zlin Film Festival bubble interviews. Thanks for watching. Ahoy. Thank you.